Hello and welcome to Maker Monday. I feel like it has been a long time since October. And so I'm super thrilled today. I have three exciting guests. With me today is Nidra Sadorf. She is our CEO and student of the day, um, <laughs> painting her very first bisque bowl um, on camera for you. So, <laughs> and I literally pressured her into doing that. So she if did. you don't see me next Maker Monday, you know I'm <laughs> in a lot of trouble. Um, I also have Karen Crosby, who is retired art educator, from kindergarten all the way up to the collegiate level. She still teaches in her community and is a very active and talented artist. And we also have Brie Kathman. And Brie, you certainly can turn on your, um, your camera for just a minute so everybody can see you. And Brie is with Mako. She is the, oh, I wrote it down and I think I forgot it the senior administrative sales director. I'm probably messing that all up, but she is the got, expert at- You got very close. <laughs> the sales administrative director. Sales administrative director. I was just throwing in extra stuff because yeah, I like you, it. Are our, you are our Mako expert and we're super grateful. So we want it to be interactive, everybody. Um, the first thing that I want to tell you is use the chat. Um, use the chat to ask questions. Use the chat to say who you are and where you're from, because your chat is also going to enter you into a drawing. Um, Mako is giving away two um, really cute holiday pieces that we will show you at the end. We're going to make you wait. So put your name and um, where you're from in, the, well, you don't have to put your name because it'll show up, but just tell us where you're from, what grade you teach and use the chat. So without further ado, I am going to turn it over to Karen. Um, you're going to learn so much because this is not only about fundraising, you're going to learn a little bit about um, painting a bowl. You're going to learn a little bit about um, involving your community. I am thrilled at the way that Karen and her um, team at in Lake Mills have created this event. So with that, I will introduce you to Karen Crosby and Karen, thanks so much. <laughs> You're welcome. Um, thank you. Um, and Chris has invited me here to tell you about our process and our process um, is through the Art Alliance of Greater Lake Mills. We um, are an art group. We represent the arts, uh, music, art, theater, writing, and um, members in our community belong to our group. And we do um, artistic things yearly around our town. We have sculptures, we have poetry pavers in the sidewalk. Um, and then uh, one of our members came up with this idea of doing a Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl was titled Super, doing the play on the actual football game, which is the following weekend. Um, our Super Bowl um, has the community come in, create art. Um, we fire the bowls, they come back and purchase a bowl, eat their meal that's provided with the bowl, and then uh, in this case, we um, were looking for opportunities to um, support um, places in the community. Like uh, our first year, our proceeds went to um, the food pantry. And the second and the third year, we, we paid for um, student, outstanding student, uh, fees for their lunches. Oh, I love that. And so, um, yeah, and That's we did that school-wide and, um, and we did that two years in a row because it was so successful. Um, of course, last year we didn't have the um, Super Bowl and we just canceled the Super Bowl for this year because of the same oh. reason. When so. it deals with food, sometimes well, right. you really um, have to be extra careful. Yeah. Um, Although there's a lot of variation. So you could truly have an event where you make the bowls and don't do the food part of it. 
but there is sure. something about the community and the fellowship right. and right. sitting down and dining with yeah. with others i understand the that. nice thing about this is making it your own it, yes. you, you do what works for you our super bowl was held in the elementary school and so double reason we didn't mm -hmm. um want to hold it um, but the local art teacher in lake mills is also part of our group and we gave uh both fourth grades bowls and then the art teacher and the fourth grade classes uh created and glazed the bowls so so before we go into too many details i'm just going to check to see if there's any questions um it absolutely is a collaboration with the school um the alliance and the community. Right. So all of there's that many opportunities for people mm -hmm. to get involved, but the students in the schools are involved. How about high school and middle school? Um, bulls were donated to a grade level and they at also each. did them. Mm -hmm. Very cool. So there, you all might be familiar with empty bowls and empty bowls is often the name that people call these kinds of events. Honestly, Empty Bowls is a not-for-profit organization that helps raise money to feed hungry people. And um, if you go to the Empty Bowls website, it tells you way more about it. And they will also walk you through an Empty Bowls event, which is a phenomenal thing to do. This is another opportunity where there might be some needs in your own community that might, you know, one time it was the food pantry, another time it was lunch money for students. So if you want to go a little bit of a different path, mm -hmm. you won't call it empty bowls because that is the not for profit name. Um, you'll be creative like Karen's team was with Super Bowls, which I love. I think that's fun <laughs> because <laughs> we all know how much sports gets attention. Um, mm -hmm. Let's give the arts the same kind of attention right. as well. And how much fun to eat your soup on, you know, one day and then the next mm -hmm. on Saturday and then the next day, eat your soup while you're watching the Super Bowl <laughs> or your chili or not your nachos um, or your candy if yep. you're me. So um, we partnered with Mako to create a kit to help teachers sort of eliminate some of the hard part, especially if you're not, um, like if ceramics isn't your um, medium of choice, or if you don't have a ceramic um, studio or anything in your school. So the bowls for a cause, the Mako bowls for a cause kit has bisque bowls. It has um, all kinds of ceramic brushes in there. And then it has stroke and coat. And I will tell you a little bit about the stroke and coat because it is really user friendly. And Brie, you can interrupt anytime you want on this. Um, stroke and coat um, often is going to be the color or pretty close to the color that you see it in the bottle. And if you know anything about glazes, sometimes you will be painting orange and that will fire to some crazy other color. And you're like, oh, I thought it was orange. You have to look at the chip chart. Stroke and coat, you really don't because it pretty much is um, holding up a blue and this is called blue yonder. They do have pretty <laughs> cute creative names too. Um, pretty user friendly. Um, if you do it with one coat, it's very transparent. A few coats is going to give it um, a lot more of okay. opaque. I was like, I know the word opaque. Um, and you do want to do at least three coats to make it um, dinnerware safe, or you will put a glaze over it. So with that, Karen, tell us a little bit about decorating the bowls, um, particularly for my friend Nidra, who is oh. a first, <laughs> who's All a right. first timer. Um, well, we picked the bisque bowls versus the handmade bowls because it eliminated several steps, firing and that kind of thing. So the bisque bowl. Although if you really want to be ambitious, oh, you yeah. can go straight from right. hand building and the whole nine yards throwing and you can have some real fun yeah. with that too. And, but and yes. there are schools that do that. You certainly can. Big and, time and saver. When we say make it your own, those are the options, some of the options that you have. We chose to buy a pre-made bisque bowl. 
Um, when you, you want me to start from the basics, like, yeah, yeah. Okay. So there's one place on the bowl you don't glaze and that's the part that sits on the kiln shelf. You leave that uh, free of any glaze. If you do get glaze on it, you can take a sponge or toweling and, and wash that off and it, it becomes uh, safe to fire. Um, you glaze the outside? Yes, just like that. See how that, yeah. I already I already made a little I did it too, so don't <laughs> even feel don't even feel bad. And so um, as Chris said, you want to do three coats or do two coats with a clear glaze over it um, inside and out. You can use one of these large mop brushes for a quick surface cover. You can move on to smaller brushes and you can even take your brush and use the handle to transfer the glaze to do something like this, especially for the uh, student that's afraid of it not turning out because it's the one shot deal. Um, that's an easy way to have a successful project turn out. Um, once it's been glazed, do you give them any parameters in terms of how they glaze it, that kind of stuff? What, yeah. do, you, what do you tell them in when terms of non, what's the rule? <laughs> when you have a non-art person <laughs> assisting, you want to make sure your assistants and your students have been given all the parameters um, not to mix certain colors, you know, complementary oh, gotcha. colors, you know, you end up with a muddy looking mm -hmm. surface. You want Stroke to- Stroke coat does yeah. mix well, oh. but you still want to mix appropriate colors. Just sure. because it mixes well, doesn't mean you're going to add black to everything. You're probably right. going to wreck the glaze. And you don't want to add compliment to compliment unless, you know, it depends. Again, it's your art, so it's up to you. Um, you want to determine how many bowls they can glaze in an event. Mm -hmm. uh, we had several, events in the community, in the nursing homes, in a senior center. And if you had someone who was really ambitious that slapped it on any old way and did six of the bowls, and then they weren't um, as lovely as they could have been, right. um, mm -hmm. you, want, you mm -hmm. want to stay on top of that, just, just like any art teacher would stay on top of it in her, sure. in her classroom. Because you are going to get a wide variety of talents and abilities, right. you know, and so, you know, obviously mine and Nidra's bowl is probably going to get tucked into ones <laughs> that are a little bit more fancy. But the other part is, even though you're painting your bowl to how you want it, it becomes part of a community thing, right? right. I don't get my bowl, right? Not necessarily, no. At um, least the way that you guys did the it. The way we did it, yes. You certainly could set it up so everyone gets their own bowl. We set it up for let's get together, let's glaze the bowls. Um, and then they were glazed off site. They were brought to the elementary school. They were all set out and first come, first served. You were able to pick out a bowl of your choosing. Did people oh, line up? So from somebody oh, yeah. that somebody yeah. else made at the event. Yep. Oh, oh yeah. Cool. yeah. Yeah. People lined up. Um, it was fun, you know, the line out there. Did you ever have any tears over oh. I didn't get my bowl? I remember one young person was a little miffed. Um, but we just talked them down. <laughs> yeah. That's all that's always good. So also too, Karen has done an outstanding job of detailing and outlining this whole event. And so we have included that in the chat. So make sure to click on that and save that so that you have all the information. It, the yellow, in the yellow highlights is tips and tricks um, that were specific to Karen's event, but I wanted to keep those in there because that might be very specific to what you do. And it's just nice to know those kinds of helpful hacks and, and, yeah, yeah. and things that you've probably learned, you know, the hard way. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so it, it's always nice. I will also say the thing that I love about Maker Monday and inviting featured guests is they are always willing to collaborate. So if you read through the handout and you still have questions after today, email me 
and I will connect with Karen to answer questions or connect you together. We love making those kinds of connections. You know, take Chrissy out as the middle person <laughs> because um, especially when it gets technical. I will also say the same about Bree and the folks at Mako. Glaze and firing and clay and bisque, it all gets tricky. And when something doesn't work out, there's usually a very good reason for it. And it's pretty technical. And so often we go to the folks at Mako to answer those technical questions. And so we want you to know that, you know, we don't just say, hey, here's your goals for a cause kit. <laughs> Have at it. Good luck. We want you to be successful. So, um, so talk a little bit more about how you like how you organize it and and sort of gently the steps, you know, okay. and you don't have to be super detailed, but just, you know, once we sort of figured out the bowls okay. and, um, and how did you get the teachers involved in the first place? Did you just uh, well, call the school? Most of our, our teachers are members of our organization. So they're induction by fire. Hey, we're going to do this. And, and they were more than willing because we gave them the product and the glaze and then they could do it. And, um, and then of course, um, our elementary, our local elementary art teacher was instrumental in getting the use of the elementary school for the actual yes. uh, meal. Event. The actual event was held at the elementary school. And that's kind of nice because they mm -hmm. have a full on institutional kitchen, right. easy to wash and easy to do all that kind of stuff. I mean, those and little details make a big difference. Right. And the first year we didn't use their kitchen. The first year we used Nesco roasters uh -huh. and um, washed dishes in bins you know, in, in oh, old tops? fashioned dish pans. Oh, yeah. um, and so, um, and we blew fuses. And so then <laughs> soup was not that warming stinks. up. And so we had Nesco roasters all around the school that we were uh, trying to heat up without uh, blowing too many more fuses. And I do believe it was the fire department with their large generator that saved us. Wow. How many people did you serve that first year? Um, I believe it was 300 and some. Wow. I could be off by 100 wow. or so. Wow. Mm -hmm. And how did you get the word out? To, because that's a, that's a wonderful, we sure. talk about community involvement. Yeah. Getting that wide a swath together. How did you Well, our, our writers in the group were writing articles for the newspaper. Um, we had people um, speak on the radio uh, for community events. Nice. We have a website. Uh, I, I take that back. We, yes, we have a website and a Facebook page. And then um, that all um, was repeatedly promoted um, okay. word of mouth by the by yeah. the third year it was, oh, we're glad you're doing this again. Yes. And, oh, yeah. you know, Fun. So just a fun fact, when I asked Karen to be, you know, would she be willing to share this particular event? And she said, yes, I, social media is a beautiful thing. I went and stole pictures from her <laughs> Facebook page because I knew she would let me do that and shared some with our marketing team in which our um, creative director was like, I made that bowl. <laughs> really? <laughs> yes. Our creative director is from Lake Mills and Fort Atkinson, former oh, student. Gotcha. Thank you very much. And they participated mm -hmm. in one of the community events, um, mm -hmm. her and her daughter. And so I just happened to have the picture that had Liz's <laughs> bowl oh, in it. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. And I yeah. think that is something to be said mm -hmm. for participating in community, whether mm -hmm. it's some, an event like this or a mural, even if you just painted one small piece or made one bowl, you feel part of that greater That's good. Right. And it sh really shows the power of art and the power of art education because there's a sense of pride in making something. And so mm -hmm. these students feel good about not only what they've created, but about doing something mm -hmm. good. So mm -hmm. we interrupt, but that, keep going fine. in terms of- So where did I leave off? So um, we had permission to use the school. The second year we had, um, we were able to use the school kitchen 
And we hired one of the cooks to heat up the soups in the school counter that heats up soups. And um, uh, it worked much better. We didn't blow any fuses mm -hmm. and uh, things ran smoothly. We created a map in the lunchroom when people finally picked out their bowl, they got in line, they purchased it. Um, they uh, went to the first washing station and our, our 4-H students uh, washed and dried the bowls and then they carried it to the food line. They filled up with uh, soup and breads and desserts and sat down at the table and uh, ate their meal. And once they were completed, uh, eating they and were leaving uh, it was difficult to get people to leave they were having uh, this camaraderie talking yes. with people that you uh -huh. didn't know um, it, like a, just a nice old-fashioned church supper kind of feel um, once they were done and they were leaving we washed the bowls a second time so they went home with a clean bowl and um, we had uh, another year we included a uh, silent auction nice. where members of the art alliance donated art that they make and those proceeds were included in our um, final tally um, some foods were donated like uh, a member of the community bought various amounts of breads made at the local bakery and that was oh included. very cool yeah. who made all the desserts um, members of the uh, Art Alliance did. Oh, nice. I'm not quite sure that's <laughs> <laughs> volunteer gray area. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but um, we did do that, and it was successful. And and we had coffee and milk and and drinks. How did you know how to price things? We took a good guess. Okay, <laughs> we tried to keep it affordable for. Um, families especially you know I, I mentioned the fourth grade students that did this yes um if there are four four students in that family that a 15 dollar contribution for a bowl gets to be yeah rather lot. pricey yeah. and so we tried to keep it um manageable um those people those students that um participated in the glazing of the bowls, they were given a discount ticket to offset some of that cost. Oh, nice. Right? Very nice. Yeah. So how about, I think in the handout, it also mentions some donations. Right. Um, we solicited sponsors around the community. So um, we have a, a realtor that donated uh, a, like five hundred dollars and then we had someone else that donated another business 350 nice. and a third business did 250 you could you could go out for more sponsors if you wanted to um right i mean yeah it, again that's you all, make it your own right yep this, and this worked for us to cover you know some of the basic costs right right because then that means you can earn more and, and share more share and that more. kind of stuff exactly. absolutely did and, you run out of bowls we came close one year um, and then the next year, you know, you might have 10 or 12 left over. What do you do with the leftovers? Um, those are securely wrapped up in bubble wrap in our storage unit, ready to be resurfaced the next time we have oh, perfect. a fundraiser. So we're not wasting anything. Right. We're, we're able to um, hopefully use it again the, the next time we have it. So um, the soups, when you're talking about donations, yep. um, you would technically have to um, have your food out of a, a, a state, uh, what's the word I want, a approved kitchen. Right, right, yes. And so our soups came from uh, restaurants, you know, the chef. Uh -huh. donated um, two soups neat and they told you know they told us what soup it was and so then the next restaurant that we went to we were able to let them know well chicken noodle soup is covered it's taken we need something did you else. put little um signs we up had, like this is from lovely little signs that ah. identified the soup um i like that idea yeah. too because then it sort of promotes and, and we had gluten gluten-free offerings in the soup and in the bread um 
Perfect. Yeah. What, um, what kind of feedback did you get in terms of? Oh, it, it was, um, you wanted it to last another couple of hours because the community was uh, very appreciative. They were having fun on a cold January day and it's snowing and icy outside. Yes. But here you are eating a nice hot meal and you're talking with people you may know or may not know. And, um, it, and I just, I kind of walked around just put out little mini fires as they might occur. And there was a gentleman who came, he ate, he was in line to get his bowl. He was leaning up against the wall and he had fishing garb on. He had, you know, the, yeah. and <laughs> you know, that's, yeah, that's the first thing. I like fishing garb. Yes. Yeah. And so I struck up a conversation with him and I didn't know him. He wasn't familiar and um, got around to asking him, uh, why he was there other than eating soup and he said he was listening to the radio while he was fishing and heard about in it. Beloit is there water in Beloit there is the Rock River mm -hmm. <laughs> okay well he was ice fishing he was hungry he heard about our Super Bowl because we were advertising uh, heavily on the radio yeah. and he drove up for lunch and I just think that wow, is that's awesome. so cool. That is fantastic. Yeah. And that says a lot for utilizing free community services exactly. because there's mm -hmm. things as long as a school is involved or a church is involved or something like that, then you can use like those mm -hmm. public service announcements. Mm -hmm. Question from our audience. Um, Greg says, um, how many bowls did you do the first event and and how did you know to like up the ante and that kind okay. of stuff um the amount chris help me what did we do the first time we had cases well, she's asking the girl i i wish i'd have had me to read through it because <laughs> we need somebody who remembers num numbers okay we had 25 boxes of 12 bulls you do the math um and we yes. have not we have <laughs> we have not increased the number three years we did the same amount um and so thereby all the supplies that we bought were the same amount for ease you know we had yeah. to draw the line somewhere because if you had more bowls we had to find people to glaze those right, the elementary right, right. school teacher did his own yep and the middle school teacher did her own um so we had two or three potters that volunteered to put the clear glaze on and then fire them. And, and that's huge. You have to be able to manage what you're offering. It's like 260 bowls. I was trying to do the math and I'm yeah, somewhat yeah. off. <laughs> Some, somewhere in there. So um, if that answers the question. Yes. Yeah. I'm curious if also too, if any of you have had an event like this, if you want to share, please put it in the chat or if you have other questions. Um, great question on numbers. Also, um, how about like as the pile whittles and, you know, somebody ends up with my bowl, uh, um, is anybody ever like, mm, not much selection <laughs> or choice? Because obviously, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> you get something that's all, you know, fancy, fancy, yeah. and then you have like polka dotted bowl. Um, well, towards the end of the meal, you had to be concerned if there's any soup left or any bread left. Yes. Yeah. But then, uh, you know, as they came in and perused, you know, like the five standard size tables, they peruse the bowls and they're looking and, you know, and you can see if they go around the table two or three times that um, their, uh, their bowls are less desirable than others. But I most I people, I think, also realize it's a fundraiser. It's a fundraiser. And, it's and a community they, event. You know, yeah. um, while this is uh, just a couple colors, I'm still getting something. I'm still right. leaving with a physical yeah. thing and yeah. my belly full, which yeah, you know exactly. always makes me happy too. I. What other suggestions that you would give? Mm -hmm to somebody starting this event? Like, 
the like sure. as it applies to like the partnerships and and right. who to get involved and that kind of stuff well when i created this um handout i started from the very basics where you probably want to have the facility in mind and permission to use that facility you want to figure out a date so that um on the facility and i'm sorry i'm an mm -hmm. interrupter on the That's facility good. it's just if i don't ask right now it's gone yeah, yeah. <laughs> um when it came to the school perfect place because it's going to mm -hmm. be a large you know it's a cafeteria that's what they do right. did you have to go through the school district was it just the principal of the school well, again the member that was the elementary teacher he took care of all of nice. that he started at the appropriate level with his principal and then it you know had to go to the district office and and the schools insured and all that kind of thing that you need to be concerned about and so um once they saw what we were doing was a good thing yes and that it worked and that the the room was cleaner than when you know cleaner when we left than when it came in <laughs> that's a big thing yes. um they appreciated what we were doing and were happy to uh, let us use the facility so um figuring out the dates is all part and parcel with the the school and uh once you had those basics down, you needed to talk to the restaurants um, to get the food. Yeah. Um, I'm going to interrupt sure. really quick because we have a question. Somebody is joining us a few minutes late. And if anybody else has, um, it'll be just a good recap. So this is, we're talking about an event that is, we call our kit bowls for a cause, but where you are raising money for a cause, but in Karen's case, um, the Lake Mills Art Alliance, mm -hmm. their real primary goal was to um, incorporate the arts into their everyday lives. Um, you didn't have to be a full-time artist to be part of this. Mm -hmm. And you ended up doing something nice for the community at hand too. Absolutely. So we have attached a Google um, sheet that has the whole outline, um, Karen, and it's specific to what um, Karen's event was Super Bowls because they did it right around the Super Bowl, which mm -hmm. I think is <laughs> stellar, so clever. Yeah. Um, very clever. But yes, you can raise money for hunger relief. They, the first year they did um, money for the local food pantry. And then the next two years, they raised money to alleviate any um, outstanding, outstanding school, school lunch um, fees, for, fees students. for students. You know, I always giggle on that because we always had an outstanding <laughs> fee because, you know, all of a sudden yeah. your kid deviates and orders like three lunches because he's <laughs> huge and hungry, you know, um, and, and an athlete, you know what I mean? And so I should have said huge. That sounded bad. Um, not body shaming him. He was really tall and he ate a lot. And so next thing you know, I'd get one of those notes or emails that said, you owe 10 extra dollars. And I'm like, what in the world? So that would have helped my family yeah. for sure. And, and we, did, we did that two years in a row because that was, that went over so well. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Another question sure. that I have is, do you feel like it brought attention to the art departments oh, in the most, schools? I believe, yes, to the schools and to our organization. And when we do a project, like we might be fundraising to do a sculpture in the in the park. Um, I think people remember what we've done yep. and what and who we did it for. Yep. And and then they're they're willing to help us with the next thing. Yes. And um, I think it was it was a good thing for your event like mm -hmm. you picked a bisque bowl and all the bowls were the same yes it it wouldn't necessarily have to be that way especially no. if you did it from scratch and you actually did um handmade form yeah bowls. or or mm -hmm. throw the bowls um 
so Ruth says, I've been doing this project for the last 10 years through the nonprofit Empty Bowls, which is specifically for hunger relief. Yes, Ruth, we actually did chat a little bit about that. And I would recommend for anybody to check out um, Empty Bowls website. I didn't even think to offer the link, but it also is outstanding. They have raised enormous amounts of money for hunger relief and the idea behind it and all the effort that has put forth in it is fantastic. I applaud you for doing that because I have noticed, I worked at NASCO, I'm in my 18th year, and I have noticed that art teachers who do these type of art for a purpose um, community events, um, and have these kind of collaborative efforts advance their art program. Mm -hmm. it, they, they are noticed, um, you know, if it's at the high school level, a more people, more students end up taking their class. Mm -hmm. Parents know of the art department. Administrators appreciate it because that gives them sort of accolades of what kind of citizens they are growing in their school. Mm -hmm. And so I find that, I mean, there, Debbie West is somebody uh, that is known for art with a purpose and has done a wide variety of things. Suzanne Devine Clark in Florida um, also has it to the point where her students hear of something that has happened, you know, whether it's something that is, you know, like a, a tragic event, you know, the events in Haiti or um, when Katrina happened in New Orleans, that they then say, hey, can we do art with a purpose? And so this is one of those mm -hmm. art with a purpose kind of things. And where the, the value for the Art Alliance is can, keeping art at the forefront of the community. Exactly the side effect is earning some of this money that then goes and benefits the school and the students mm -hmm. and the community. Mm -hmm. And it just, I mean, it's just this side, a million side effects of good things it's happening mm -hmm. and not very many negative things, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, there's always something that, you know, you, you blow the circuit and there's I always know. something that, you know, tries to rain on your parade, but yeah. it's good yeah, stuff. It's pretty Can minor. Talk about too, so I mean, there's the benefit to the recipient that, that the donations they made to, there's the benefit to the art community, but what about the benefit? I've just had such a fun time here playing. What about the benefit to the students and the people who are actually creating the art just mm. from, from being involved in the process itself? Well, for example, you came in here saying you're not an artist and, and things that you've made are, are kind of shoved in the background <laughs> mm -hmm. and, and uh, look what you've done. It's absolutely because I, because I followed your advice. <laughs> we all need art teachers. I was, yes. it is, it, it yes. is definitely it a great looks case. Fantastic. And it'll turn out fantastic. And this might be the first piece of art I created that I will claim. <laughs> that I will actually like. And, and you feel good to. while you're doing it. Yes. And then when you see it again completed, and then every time you use it or have to wash it, or, you know, you're mm -hmm. going to remember that feeling. Yeah. And, um, and that you, oh my gosh, the arts aren't so bad. Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. it might be a fun thing to do again. I am happy that you brought that up to Nidra because... I participated when Karen was still teaching in Fort Atkinson in a mural project. And they asked for some adult volunteers that would paint along with the students. But that way, you know, um, and I totally remember <laughs> Mrs. Crosby said, you know, she gave us the demonstration first and she said, and it was, I'm pretty sure it was kinders because, <laughs> you know, she knew my level. And she said, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to paint like we're brushing, petting, petting a, kitten. a kitty, you know, wow. just, you know, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're not going to smack a kitty while you're petting it. That would be bad. <laughs> that would be bad. You're just going to do gentle brushes. And it was adorable because they were so involved. But then when I came back a few weeks later for like finishing touches and things like that, 
littles, I mean, honestly, from kindergarten to fifth grade, as they walk by, they're like, I painted the boot. And I, <laughs> and I laugh because to this day, if I go there, I'm like, I helped paint that tree. <laughs> and I think yes. it is that sense of pride and ownership. And can you imagine how they must feel too, as somebody picks their bowl up to buy? Yeah. That's right. got to feel good, Absolutely. you know? Uh, so I think that's kind of, mm-hmm. and when you're putting it together, I'm sure you talk about like, hey, somebody's going to buy this. Oh, sure. And so you talk about the, quality. The process yes. and, and doing a good job and yes, mm-hmm. all that. Is it, um, who fires them all? Well, we have um, several potters in our community. And um, um, we had two potters that fired all, what did we say, 300 bowls? Did the, mm-hmm. school, did the schools not fire the, their own? The schools did, did fire their own, their own. Okay. yeah. So. But you could probably partner with the school to fire. It just would be a lot on a teacher, teacher as I point right. to you. because It would be teacher. a lot on the teacher. That, um, and that's part of it. You know, you've got potters in the community. Um, yes. This is exposure for them. Yes. And, and they're helping, you know, they have tentatively have larger kilns yeah. and, um, you know, you could have high school kids go after school and help. I mean, there's there's a whole array of things you could do to make it work for you. I think the other part about that, too, that I love is that a potter is a working, working artist. artist. Yeah. And often you don't you don't hear about people who use their art education for a living, you know, mm-hmm. The yeah. interesting part is we know that everything we learn in art, we do l- mm-hmm. use, you know, the use of time and yeah. materials wisely, you know, respect for others, you know, all those mm-hmm. four C's, those life skills. But it is neat for that child who really wants to grow up to be an artist mm-hmm. to then see people in their community mm-hmm. that are mm-hmm. utilizing their art not only the folks that are part of the art alliance but also these potters in the community that participate yep. mm-hmm. I like that whole idea a lot mm-hmm. you guys are a quiet group um, <laughs> any questions for Karen that you have also too there's only been a few of you that have put your name in the chat And we do have a really cute holiday door prize that was donated by Mako. Uh, It's, uh, look at that, isn't that adorable? And so two finished pieces that they will mail out to the winner. So when we get to the close, we will will pick a winner. And um, if if you don't um, keep it for yourself, you can, use it as a door prize for your school or for give it to your principal. (laughs) It's always good to butter up the boss. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) I'm just happy you let me be here. You know, Chris, you mentioned at the beginning the, the kit of materials. Can you talk about why that part is important and and how that helps? Because when there's, there's a bigger, there's a, there's a bigger goal here and a bigger, benefit and community it might be easy to like kind of glaze over (laughs) she's never gonna let me back again (laughs) oh no no, I love that kind of stuff are you kidding me I've been holding back so no no you are absolutely right so what I love about the art alliance is that they have a lot of expertise Mm-hmm. And they are going to use people that are going to help do this. If you don't have that kind of support, this Bowls for a Cause is really nice because it gives you everything you need. There's also a tip sheet in there mm-hmm. that we worked with. And I'm almost positive that also shares the Empty Bowls um, website on there as well. <laughs> oh, and we put the link right in the chat because we have an awesome producer behind the scenes that helped me. And so, but this particular kit is a really introductory, safe, so that everybody is going to be successful. And then you can build off of that. And, and Karen has done a 
fabulous job of putting all kinds of part numbers in the Google document. Um, but the kit is just one where you know you're going to get enough for I think it's 24 students. Mm -hmm. And so you can, you know, if you need to buy more than one kit, and it's also easy, you know, um, if you're doing this, you can take it to your principal and say, hey, is there any way that there's any additional funds that we can use? Or, you know, you can put it out there on like a donor's shoes and, mm -hmm. and write up, you know, yeah. write up your yeah. um, case for that. People really do love this kind of collaboration. And so, yeah. and I always say now that I'm a grandparent too, like throw it out <laughs> there to your students, tell your granny and, and your grandpa about this because they'll donate, you sure. know, so, so I, so I really like that as well, but it's one of those things that is very choice-based. So there's yeah. a lot of ways to do it. Exactly. What changed from the very first one to the last mm -hmm. one? What was like the <laughs> biggest change? Uh, the biggest change we utilized, well, we had the school, but getting the kitchen was huge. Blowing the fuses was uh, not <laughs> planned, uh, but exciting with the fire department. So we were live entertainment to boot. Um, we uh, had more donations. People saw what we were doing. So all of a sudden we had the bread donation. But was this sort of the easy part of it? And I'm not even trying to be oh. funny, but like getting everybody on board, um, even like community people and teaching them how to do oh, the... that was the fun part. That yes. was like mm -hmm. teaching art in your classroom. Yeah. You just, except you multiplied it by 50 students. And um, like when we were at the um, community center, we had uh, people from all walks of life that we had policemen and we had right. former students and we had grandparents that walked in with their grandkids um, and you just ran through the instructions just like I told you don't paint on the bottom yep. three coats of glaze you know glaze it gently like petting a kitten mm -hmm. and um, and when they were done they gave us the bowls back and and I forgot what the question was. Just the biggest change. <laughs> oh, biggest change. And I wondered if any of it had to do with the actual art making. Like, like, oh, uh, we realized that too many people or this or oh, that, or, you know, I just um, wondered, but it seemed like all the changes were, were like the technical kind of stuff, yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah. the actual the, logistical kind of right, stuff. The, not glazing, so much. the glazing with the senior center was wonderful with that age group. Um, we had... Uh, disability students that came and glazed and worked with the senior citizens. Yeah. Um, it, was, it was an all around success. We didn't have too many students. We didn't have too few materials. Um, Who did the marketing part of it? Did the Alliance do all yeah. of that? Yeah. And so the other thought process too is as you look for volunteers and as uh -huh. you get people in your community is mm -hmm. finding that person that might work at the radio station or or, or knowing the... that reporter i know fort atkinson does it we're a smaller community but they do a really good job of when the schools are doing something art show at our local um mary hord um art, art museum yeah. um that historical museum they do a great job of telling the and reporter more. and so then the word does get out and social media is a beautiful thing right. i mean it can be a real sick thing but when it comes to stuff like this that's what it's all about and all of a sudden the instagrams you know hashtag super bowl and, and how we collected monies you know you can do at the door but you also had uh, there's a here's my technology rearing its ugly head it's a uh, where you can pay for it uh with paypal or venmo or yes, something like that the card reader thing yeah, yeah. yes and so that was incorporated and it's streamlined yes um mm -hmm. everything so that changed yeah. um but getting volunteers for this super bowl is the easiest one because they've seen the success yes. and they felt mm -hmm. the success yes and um 
And, and we also called upon 4-H students. Oh, and excellent every, idea. You know, they might wipe the tables or they might run for napkins or, yep. you know. Well, and for those of you um, that have National Art Honor Society students, they need volunteer hours as mm -hmm. part of their National Art Honor Society criteria. Right. And so that is a fabulous opportunity right. to get those high schoolers. And um, if you have like a middle school version, um, that's another opportunity. Sure. And there's other, there's other community or club type things yeah, in the, school that need the football team. Yes, that yeah. need volunteer hours to serve, which is good. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, even local youth groups and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I love that kind of collaborative mm -hmm. because I am not the best artist in the world. I like to I, I like to call myself an artist though, because 90,000 art teachers said I'm an artist. So now I say <laughs> I am and I'll try anything because that's the beauty of art is we get to try. Mm -hmm. But in an event like this, like I, I like to serve. And mm -hmm. so to me, being able to participate, but then use a different skill that I might have, mm -hmm. like wiping tables down, <laughs> cl clearing the kitchen. I'm six of six. So I did a lot of dishes in my life. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's fun to use those kinds of skills. Make sure we are going to draw soon um, for a winner. So make sure um, to put your name in. Um, when I do call the winner, um, our producer's going to randomly pick for me because otherwise it's just too hard. Um, then you can email me. And if you have any questions, you can, after this, or after you go through the handout, you can email me um, anytime. I'm Chris Bakke. I'm the customer engagement manager at NASCO. So my job is you, is actually serving you. And it's the best job at NASCO, even over the CEO, because all the way to the world's <laughs> on her shoulders. I get to have all the fun. And so... Um, Last call. Um, and Mary, thank you. This has been so um, interesting. Ruth, um, when you click on the Google Doc, it says your access is denied. I think we posted uh, another link. Um, so go a little further down in the chat and click on the one of the last links and it should allow, allow it. If it doesn't, feel free to email me. And Shannon Voss, you are our winner. So Shannon, um, send me an email, your address, and we will give that to Mako and um, Bree and team will get that out to you. We still have a few minutes. Does anybody have any questions? Karen, um, do you have any questions? questions. Oh, many, her. many life questions. What else can I add? <laughs> um, when we were doing this, it was my responsibility to keep track of what we did. Yes. Just because um, within a month, we would, I would forget what we've done. And so we kept a running dialogue of what we did, how we did it. Uh, where we did it, everything, no matter how minor yes. it was and how we solved it. And, um, and then from those kind of notes, we changed up the following year. That's how we improved is by keeping track of what we've done. So that is excellent advice for life in general, True. because you always, because <laughs> you always are like, well, what did we do last year? Right. And if you've ever run um, any, any kind of, even like youth Bible event, you know, whatever. having that written document is so important. Mm -hmm. So um, show a couple of these bowls. Okay. Well, this is uh, the one I walked around with when I was explaining to the masses how to glaze a bowl. And, um, and perfect because it's nice and simple. It, nice and simple. And those folks no, that note were... Note to self, when the teacher does it, <laughs> everybody <laughs> does it. It inspired me. <laughs> um, and many intimidated people didn't uh, use yeah. a paintbrush. They hadn't picked it up since grade school. And so, you know, just use the end of the brush and get your glaze on that way. Um, and that... 
freed them up from mm. their fear mm. um, to actually go ahead and try. Um, this is a student one that uh, glazed. We also- and They were either a little um, card player with their clubs <laughs> and hearts, or they were just feeling, you know, lucky and lucky in love. love. <laughs> I also, speaking of brushes though, like mm -hmm. the, the kit includes ceramic brushes of a wide variety of um, tips and styles. What if you don't have ceramic brushes? What, what we kind of- We use whatever we have. Okay. We did purchase a bunch. I believe we bought Royal brushes. Yeah, they're good. They're good. Um, but we, you know, if they had narrow little paint brushes, it doesn't matter if the hair comes off, the hair burns off in the kiln. We yes. used what we could find. And if you use a bigger brush for the glazing, it's well, nice. your yes. it saves Covered. our time. Absolutely. Um, and so like a Teflon brush would work, a watercolor brush I, would yeah, work, yeah. Um, pretty much any if you, bristle, will that yeah. show marks? Um, well, marks do you enjoy it that? It depends, I think. That's, that's we code understood. for marks. Um, <laughs> or Googling, you know. <laughs> you have to point your fingers down if I you're Googling. I think it depends on the layers. You know, it might show up on a uh, one layer of glaze. Gotcha. But, uh, but uh, you know, I'm just noticing even in this bowl, you know, you can see that, you know, there's some mm -hmm. variation, but it almost looks like on purpose well, sure. and, and beautiful. It so, looks like the sky. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I can't thank you enough because it is an enormous amount of work mm -hmm. and yeah. experience so to put it all into a document and then just give out to everybody and share oh, with everybody. Did you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> $10 to Karen Cross. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Karen is one of the old schoolers that you know was before Instagram where yes. where a group of teachers got together and shared paper lesson plans yeah. and now in social media you know it's you know hashtag everything yeah. and it's out there but I would encourage everybody to look into an event like this mm -hmm. or something that gets the community involved because when you put your art and your students' art out there, it really enhances the value and it shows how important art education is. And right now, teachers are all about those hands-on experiences. You know, um, I know with my six grandchildren, there's a lot of, you know, this is them on the iPad and the devices and there's a lot of screen time and there's something really valuable about creating something and the pride that comes with that piece of artwork is mm -hmm. phenomenal so thank you Nidra thank you so much for, thank you for being you here <laughs> um you know not very many CEOs take time out of their day to paint and play with us so um I'm grateful Karen I am so grateful for you you remain my um go-to person on she is my art teacher is what I'm telling you as an adult I still need an art teacher in my life and the information is valuable and it is something that you can springboard off use it as is or get inspired to say, hey, I like this, but I'm going to try this or I'm right. going to do this. And please feel free to share with us. I would love to hear from you. I put my email address in there. Feel free to email me anytime because that's what I do is I serve you. Bree, thank you so much for being here. Yes, thank you so much for having uh, me. It was It was fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing. Well, I'm sure there's more that you could have added, but you're just being um, such a kind and gracious um, panelist and being a great listener. So we appreciate your willingness to also be our expert behind the scenes. Absolutely. Everybody, um, we have another Maker Monday coming up in December, and they are available for you to register right on nascoeducation.com. So Go on our website and you'll see a new logo. We would love to hear what you think about our new logo. And thank you for all that you do every single day. I mean, more than ever, we know that kids are a little crazy and out of control, but I understand that their art is turning out pretty amazing because a lot of that emotion is going right into it. And it's all because of you. So thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.